The next six minutes are not brought to you by Big Pharma, Big Tech, or social media. Question. What is trust and does truth exist? Can we trust those in our leadership positions to protect and to lead for the sake of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Unless any one of us have been asleep or in a coma, concerning what we have all dealt with in our nation and world in the last two and a half years, now that much truth is now being revealed, as it always eventually is, of the corruption we were witness to and influenced by. Have you enjoyed being lied to by certain allegedly elected officials and leadership over many important aspects of our lives, our health, our economy, our safety, and the protection of our unalienable rights and freedoms? By those attempting to manipulate and coerce us to make choices or do things that we would have otherwise made or done differently, given the truth? Like it or not, although most people are good, until the Lord returns, it is not mean or unchristian-like to understand that there is and will always be evil in the world. Yes, until His return, there will always be those who seek to dominate unrighteously over you and I. Those narcissistically behaving people who often seek leadership, and if allowed too much power, will and do become corrupt and tyrannical, and so need to be handcuffed from their tyrannical ways and removed from public office. Especially this last two and a half years has been a most horrific display of that very truth in our world with respect to truth, integrity, morality, and trust being almost obliterated with what we have witnessed and been victim to. However, never forget, we are the most perfect, powerful, inspiring country on earth that also was designed to be extremely strong, as well as a beacon of hope to not just ourselves, but to the entire world, but only if we take ownership. Yes, this is our country, and our Constitution is our owner's manual, but only if we understand it and its inspiring and liberating power, only if we uphold it, and only if we demand our leaders do the same, as well as learn about and elect only those who will. The ugly truth is, we have allowed rats in a cellar to play in our streets. We have allowed those with evil intent too much power and to sometimes become elected leaders because we weren't looking, paying attention, or were asleep, or thought it of no importance to expend any effort. And those days are over. But now that much truth has come to light and much has been exposed, we the people, like sleeping giants, have begun to awaken. But it's not enough to know and do nothing. We cannot just let go of the wheel and assume all is or will be well. No, we cannot afford to allow those who are corrupt or untrustworthy or have no character to lead this nation without the potential loss or destruction of everything that has been fought and died for. And to put it into perspective, the sweat and blood of whom would undoubtedly fill many lakes and streams over our 240-year history. Having said all this, right now we are on the precipice. We're on the scale's tipping point of an even more corrupt, oppressive, and evil environment, or a more freeing, inspiring, empowering environment where truth, not lies, are king, that our inspired founding fathers bravely drafted for the best of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But I'm sorry, there's a catch here. Freedom isn't free, haven't you heard? Just like all who've known and come before us. So, it will not just happen unless we act and by making our voices heard and show that we cannot tolerate lies and corruption. Truth and correctness are paramount for happiness and success, and it is our duty to rid the one and uphold the other. And then lastly, I ask you, right now, what do we have as a country or a constitution? Truth is, our constitution is absolutely nothing more than old parchment paper with ink on it. If we don't understand it, act on it, abide by it, love it, and uphold it. It is only as strong as the care, effort, and the character of those we the people elect or allow into any office of leadership. Last question. Do we deserve to be an American, 
or called an American or bear the fruits of America if we take no thought or effort to make our voices heard, learn, and participate in the ownership of our country? Especially right now, remember these five things. 1. We aren't technically a democracy, as is so often loosely and incorrectly stated. We are a democratic republic that can only exist within a moral and participating society. 2. Our divinely written constitution is pure enough such that if we truly honor and uphold it, we will never be destroyed from without, but only unless we allow corruption within. 3. Truth and facts must be king at all cost. 4. Abraham Lincoln said, I'm a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. The great point is to bring them the real facts. And 5. All that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke Therefore, I implore all of us who do or claim to care about truth, our families, our nation, our world, and each other, to get up off your seats on or before November 8th. It's being said, and I agree, never before has the time been more important than now. Let me ask, is this the way we'd like our Constitution to look? Would it make our Founding Fathers proud? The sobering truth is, vote like your life depends on it. Because in many ways, it does.